Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, we are here today. We're going to be playing a match. Uh, well, quite a few matches actually. Uh, the next team we up against is Arsenal. Um, in this setup, what we're going to do um, is try to create a system, a tactic that is reliable, um, that is uh, repeatable or replicable. A tactic that is strong, uh, both defensively and offensively. Um, a tactic uh, that brings the best out of every single player um, in each position on the pitch. Um, the ones I was using before was a bit kind of meh, right? Only some players would benefit, like the wide players would benefit, and the defenders, uh, the inverted wing backs, and the central defender would benefit because the their roles were quite specific. Um, so once they perform those roles, they'll get good marks. But for the midfielders, it was kind of vague. You, you get like a six or a seven maximum thereabouts. So what I want is to get um, players all across the pitch involved in the game in a, in a useful way. All right. So what I've done in this setup now is to use both Victor Lindelof and Eric Bailly in defense as liberos. That means I want them to come out of defense when they have the ball, uh, when we are in position, I wanted to move wide and step up and then have Casemiro drop back as the anchor to create a back three and have our wing backs push up to create a five in the first line of attack. And then our two attacking midfielders in the midfield area will push up also. So we'll have a, basically we'll have a three, two, five setup. 3 2 5, and then if Casemiro steps up, it will be a 2 3 5. Um, so I think that is the best setup in terms of stability. Um, so there, there it is. When you look at it in terms of actual play style, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy. I'm interested in actually seeing how this performs. As you can see, we change into an overload, it's an aggressive attacking formation we're going with an overload um, team mentality um, very wide playing wide um, and we're going to be quite expressive however we try to shorten our, our slow the tempo somewhat so the wing backs have enough time to go high up the pitch so i am quite i'm quite eager to see how um, this actually plays out how it unfolds um, before us One of the players that I've been quite happy in terms of his development recently is Scott McTominay. He's one of my favorite players. Uh, he's favorite in this game and favorite in real life just because of how he plays the game. Right? He's always there or right there about on the box. I think if we have a coach, and I think we have one now like at Manchester United, we can actually bring the best out of him and actually have him arriving in the box or on the edge of the box late. Trust me, he's a demon because what I can tell you for sure is that there's nobody in this squad currently that has a right foot like Scott McTominay. So he's one of my favorite players. All right, so uh, we pick the side. As you can see, we have Ericsson. Um, again, I think it's best to have Bruno in there. Uh, we started without Bruno, he's a general. But uh, we have Rashford up top. As a deep line forward. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is, um, he has been deteriorating quite rapidly. So, in a sense, I don't want to use him. So, in this one, we won't be using uh, Bruno Fernandes. We'll be using uh, Ericsson and McGinn uh, as advanced playmakers. And then, in the second half, should we need Bruno, we'll bring him on to finish the game off. Arsenal is a really, really good team. Right? Don't get that twisted. Um, but I, I don't know. For England, for example, even now in the World Cup, I have no idea. I know the match has started, so you guys can watch and enjoy. I have no idea why it is that people think that Saka is actually better than Rashford. He's, he's a good player, but I mean, he's basic. He's not a, a, to me, he's not a wonder kid. He's not like an Mbappe that does something outrageous. 
as there you can see the tactical setup you see the five across that was absolutely beautiful to me Saka is not like a wonder kid like that he's just a good wide player uh, who understands um, positioning and so forth there's nothing special about Saka that's from what I see anyway I don't see nothing at all special so I don't see why he starts for England over um, Marcus Rashford if you guys know why you can go ahead and tell me maybe I'm, I'm blind maybe I'm not seeing what is actually taking place but I don't see why Saka is ahead of Rashford for England because Rashford have the ability to score Rashford has the ability to score a goal out of absolutely nowhere we can muscle his way past a player and score we can score a wonder free kick he can score on the right foot, he can score left foot, he can score headers. He's positionally sound, but at least in the attacking part of the game. Beautiful pass. Excellent pass that is I'm seeing right there. Rashford on the score sheet. As I call his name, right? The mother the, the brother has it down. Look at the run that he made. I was gonna say mother effort, but I, I don't want to mess this thing up. Look at that run. Right down the middle. Brilliant. So, as I was saying before, Rashford has headers, left foot, right foot, movement. Imagine, um, for example, England needs to play France in the quarterfinal, right? France likes to play a high line, right? Imagine you have Rashford on the shoulder of their right back. I don't know who they are using that right back now, but just, just waiting on the shoulder of the right back to pounce, right? So you're on one side you have Rashford looking to go behind, you have Kane looking to go short, and on the other side you have Foden trying to interlink and join the play. That is the best version of uh, England that you can get. Right now with Saka, you have two players in Saka and Foden that are trying to get ball to feet. It just won't work against France. I hope, the, what's his name? Southgate is sensible enough I have a brain to actually realize that it will work you need pace in behind to keep them honest keep France on the back foot keep them deep in the air it's something that you require we've been playing so good so far we've been playing so well ooh Russia is offside he missed that one that is the best for England right Rashford, Kane and Foden up top very dynamic front three Rashford in behind, Kane dropping deep, and Ford in linking the play. And in behind them, what I would do, instead of having Bellingham at a number 10 position, because he's a good player, he's quite robust and he's quite fit, but I don't think he has the, 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 the nose to be a playmaker. I don't say he doesn't have the ability to pick a pass, he does, but those small passes around the corner or linking the play or those third man runs and so forth i don't think he has it locked at it i think it's more for a kind of play like Grealish who can grab the ball and the ball sticks to him and he can weave in and out and make that pass or find that space uh playing him does, just doesn't have that agility he's just more like a battering ram going through talented yes but i think his place is back in central midfield so what i would do if i was england manager first and foremost i would put on the right side because you're going up against Kylian mbappe you're going to need kyle walker right? there's no way around that you're going to need kyle walker to start right so i would put him over on the right side stones and maguire because you don't really have anybody else better right that's just basically the best you have i would actually say stones and mings together would form a, a formidable duo, but um, I'll put him on Maguire. They should be able to, 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 to suffice. Um, at left back, uh, I think the best England has for the left back role is Luke Shaw. But the problem with Luke Shaw is that he's just tactically he's not really aware. He doesn't know when to push forward as a left back. So what happens is that he's, even if you watch the game, where England played Senegal, Luke Shaw was always right, almost right next to Maguire when they were progressing the ball forward. That makes things more difficult for your team. If you push up the pitch as a left back, 
you draw the winger, the opposing winger, up with you as well. Which creates space for the midfielders to drift wide well and receive the ball and so forth. If you're staying back, then that man pushes up on you and prevents a passing lane right there, blocks a passing lane. So this kind of intelligence stuff, I just don't see it in Shaw's game. Knowing where to be, when to be, when to be there and so forth. Everything else is perfect. Right? Traveling with the ball, making a final, well, he's not good at final pass, but traveling with the ball, linking up play in the middle third, right there, he's good at that. But the, the, the intelligent part and the brain part, that's kind of slow for him. But as I said, England doesn't have anything better. Chilwell is really, really bad in terms of defensive transitions. He's really, really horrible. So it will have to be. In my case, if I was a manager of England, Luke Shaw, uh, Harry Maguire, John Stones, and Kyle Walker. What I would do differently though is, in midfield, I would use two defensive midfielders, but I would put uh, Declan Rice alongside uh, Calvin Phillips to start for England. So Rice and Phillips for, for England. And then uh, the top three, I would have Grealish at CAM, attacking midfielder. Then I would have Rashford on the left and Foden on the right, Kane up top. Right? That's what I would start with. Then for the second half, when uh, when France get tired, right? So in Mbappe has run his race and the midfield is kind of getting tired now or, or slowing down. You put on Bellingham for Calvin Phillips. Bellingham can grab the ball and drive through midfield up into the final third and actually uh, make some passes or one, two, and so forth and get England, drag England into the game. That works if they're far behind and it works if they're leading the game also. Right? So that could work for them simple, no problem whatsoever. That is how I would set up my England side. Obviously, you could either start with uh, Rice and Bellingham, Bellingham and Henderson, um, he Bellingham and Phillips. It, it can be any combination of those, but I think to start, you need a solid, solid base, defensive base. And I would put uh, Calvin Phillips um, and Declan Rice, just to keep things solid in the middle of the park. You have those extra legs, you have the tenacity, and with Phillips you have the range of pass. So that is how I would set it up. Um, and I'm sure I, I would be able to defeat France. Haha. <laughs> and possibly win the World Cup. Who the hell knows? Right? Go back to this game. We, uh, we just smashed the crap out of Arsenal. Uh, a good team, but we are better. No complaining there. Um, again, in this next game. <clears throat> because it has a yellow card, so uh, I have to take him out and maybe put someone else in. Not sure yet if we're gonna put uh, Bruno in. Let's see. Can put Ericsson in deep. Yeah, I can put Ericsson deep and have um, two stable midfielders in the midfield in McTominay and Casemiro. Alright, so Casemiro as a ball winner, McTominay as a central midfielder, and then Ericsson coming from deep as a roaming playmaker. Looks good, could work. As you can see, we have a rating of B from the board. Um, everything we are rated satisfactory uh, to excellent with, except the finances. We need to sell some players. I don't know who to sell. Well, no, I don't have a dime. Because I started the game as a unknown manager. I'm not getting any transfer money. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the only money I got uh, in the previous transfer window was two million pounds. And I suspect the next one will only get two million pounds also. But I don't want to complain. I just go ahead and make a team that can batter any and everybody. And I'm okay with that. Right? 
that's all I have to do. All right, so we're gonna go into the next game. Enough chit chatting now. Um, time to go into the next one and show off um, our tactic. Again, this is a lesser opponent, so um, I don't want to change too much. I don't want to deviate too much from what I have set in place already. But still, I want to see how uh, the tactic works over a period of around six games or so. Then I should know if I need to be more attacking, more defensive, uh, which personnel uh, should be included, who to omit. It is all, it is all, you know, all, um, all there. That's all I want to figure out. As you can see by Cristiano Ronaldo, you can see that his, his, his stats have been dropping. I played him. Um, he's not very good. I think he's reminiscent of real life now, actually. In that he will get an odd goal every now and then. Usually they're very important goals also. But in terms of the team and the build-up, he does contribute to the building-up um, phase. Right? He doesn't contribute to any phase actually except just receiving a ball and finishing. And how my team is set up at the moment, I need to have a little bit more diversity than that. That is too that is too static for my setup. I have to have a striker who is able to actually um, impose himself on the oppo opposing team and also get involved involved in the play and build up to allow the inverted wingers to run in and get some goals to their names. Ooh, what a hit! Came off the crossbar. As you can see with the Liberos, my two Liberos, you can see how far up the pitch they are. Loving that, that's absolutely loving that. So, so far, the guys have been going well. Um, I love to set up also goal. Almost, almost. Oh, yes, Ericsson. Oh, no, it's offside. That is offside. Um, I love the setup also. Um, the, the, the formation. I love how the team actually spreads. They're really occupying all the zones that I need to be occupied, as you can see. I still think it's a little bit too narrow. It's a little bit too narrow, but I guess it's because of uh, the formation that they're using. But I want my guys to play a little bit wider than this. But we should be up on the half time. Right, so it's half time now. Um, making some changes. Putting Casemiro deep and replacing him uh, basically switching him around with uh, Ericsson so Ericsson goes to the more advanced playmaker role instead of a deeper roaming playmaker and then we keep McTominay as a center mid that's his best position up top uh, we just change the attacker to an inside forward and we go again expect a lot of goals in the second half Ah, uh, see? Look at that. Look at that width. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely stupendous. Look at that. Gorgeous. Anthony. Bam! What a goal. What a beautiful goal. You cannot give Anthony that much space. It's a surprise, as, as, a, as I mentioned his name, watching him play for Brazil is a frustrating figure. He pisses me off so much because it seems as if the only intent he has is just to come in on the left foot and shoot. I want to see more from his game, I want to see more development, I want to see um, better passing, better interplay. Um, I want to see a lot more crossing because he has a good left foot on him. Put the ball in the back post, cross the ball. 
He tends to shoot almost every uh, every chance he gets. Always shooting. You have to try to. I don't know if you guys have been uh, following the World Cup, but uh, that's that's the one thing that has really pissed me off. Uh, watching Brazil, uh, I think that is why he doesn't really or he won't get to start the crucial games because he's not. Pardon me, he's not showing um, himself to be a team player. And that is said, Rafinha is much more in terms of the team. Rafinha is much more important to the team than Anthony is. Right? It's the same way some will say that Brazil as a team functions better without Neymar. Because when he plays, he tends to just think about himself, wanting to hug the ball to himself. Um, even when there's an easy pass to be made or a simple through pass or so, he rather prefers to grab the ball and um, hug it for himself. Right? Which is why he gets fouled so often because he keeps just he clings the ball to his feet and he tries to put himself in some dangerous situations where people can break his legs and break his back and all that kind of stuff. Right? It makes no sense whatsoever. That's my take on it. Anyway. Sorry for the rambling, but uh, this is what we do here. We watch football, we discuss tactics, and we talk about football while we're watching football. <laughs> Um, so, in terms of the World Cup, my predictions in terms of the winner of the World Cup, I think the final match, the World Cup final will be between mm, Spain and England. Is that either Spain and England or Spain and Brazil? I don't think France will be there. I don't know who's going to knock them up, but I don't think they're going to be there. I, I just don't see it. There's something that the team is lacking this year. It's all nice and dandy having the attacking threat up top of Mbappe. But um, and having a good midfield because the good the midfield is good. They have Kamavinga, they have uh what's his name? Tusha Many, uh Shua Many, whatever the hell they call him. But their problem lies in defense. That is a major problem. And the other problem also is the fact that uh, what's his name? Uh, what the hell is his name? Oh, Giroud. Giroud can't play. He can't play any uh, long or extended matches. Right? That won't work for him. So, that I think is why France won't be able to make the World Cup final. Teams will suss them out and just destroy them. As a matter of fact, I think England will probably beat them a 3-1 or thereabouts if they start Marcus Rashford. If not, then France will nick it in the end. Let's see if the coach has any balls about him. Let's see if he has any cojones to actually make the right calls. Alright, so this match is finished. We're back um, on this game now. Um, Ludo Goretz, we slapped them 2-0 uh, and as you can see Anthony is the man of the back. I don't know him yawning so much, I'm, I'm like I'm sleeping, I need to go get some sleep. Well, as you can see, uh, basically everything was done in a positive light. The only non-positive is that the striker is not winning his aerial duels. Can't wait to get in a physical striker. One with um, excellent physicality, brilliant in the air, um, does the best around. I can actually take the ball down for people like Rashford and Anthony and Sancho to run onto and blast it away. Who do I have in mind? Um, there's a player from Fulham, his name is Alexander Mitrovic. I thought, I don't know what just. All right, so we are heading into our uh, into our next match. Uh, it's Manchester United. As you can see, we have uh, McTominay still in midfield. Uh, we will be playing against Everton, and hopefully, this is a game that we are going to win. 
Um, look at that. I love the lineup. I love the setup. Look at how rigid this is. Look at that. Every player knows where exactly to be on the pitch. Look at that. Look at that setup. Cross. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. There's a corner. Oh, what a oh, what a pass from Victor Lindelof. Look at that pass. Holy crap. What a pass from Victor. As I say, I have these players on playing as a libero currently. So they actually look at that. How the hell did he see that pass? Um, I have them playing as libero, so they they come forward and they actually peep and look for any uh, attacking um, move that they can actually make. So it's not strictly defensive. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. They try not to cross the halfway line. Up for a corner. Everton don't know what to do. They're dumbfounded. Another corner again. Everton are on the ropes. <laughs> oh, look at this. Alright, who's this? Go. Brilliant tackle by one Bissaka. Then he throws the ball away. Come on, man. Do better than that. Do better than that. Alright, so there's a free kick. Um, hit straight into the wall. We're playing so fluid and so, 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 so intelligently. Alright, so now Everton is going on with their own attack. Brilliant defending. That should have been prevented. I don't know why you're not at all for a corner. Come on, fam. Do better than that. Do better than that. We are defending resolutely. Don't give him a shot. Don't give him a shot. Brilliant tackle. John McGinn. Brilliant tackle. Absolutely brilliant tackle. Absolutely fantastic. Um, as it relates to the World Cup again, one of the reasons why I think Brazil will win, either Brazil, England or Spain, I want Brazil to win. I'll be happy if England wins. I don't want Spain to win. That is my um, position as of this moment. Obviously, I'm a flip-flopper. So if I see playing a bit of football, I'm going to flip to that side. But for now, I want to see the Samba Kings win the World Cup. All right? For Pele's sake, before Pele dies. Oh, that doesn't sound good, but I think I heard that he's on some, uh, he's in hospitalized um, in serious condition. So anything can be expected now. But I hope at least if he is to go, and he will go, because that's how life is. But uh, you'd want him to see Brazil lift that World Cup at least one final time before he goes. Casemiro, I don't know, I can't recall him being that good as he has been for United and uh, and Brazil. I don't remember him being that good at Real Madrid. He was good at the defensive stuff. But my God, when, when he goes on the attack, he's a demon. He has such good control and good technique when it comes to the football. That it actually makes it makes absolutely no sense how good he is. So as I can see, as you can see, Everton have only managed one shot uh, on target the entire game. Right, only one shot. So it goes to show you that they are basically to not make them sound too horrible, but they are being shot down. They've been prevented from playing football, but we were playing some good stuff for ourselves. So it means that defensively we are sound. Um, our midfield is sound because we're not giving up any chances. And our uh, attacking line is sound because, well, I wouldn't say sound as yet because we're still not scoring the goals I want us to be scoring. We're not scoring enough goals, so that has to change. 
But otherwise from that I think we're 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 playing well. We are playing well. Um for my gain, my gain is in a yellow, so we'll have to change him. Uh, maybe uh, we could put Casemiro into a defensive midfield role to show up the defense, yes, as a ball winner, and then you have Ericsson up top as maybe an advanced playmaker. Oh, oh, we could put, yeah, Van de Beek could work. Give him some game time. He's quite a good player. What he's very good at is actually arriving late in the box. One of his best attributes. If you use him right, he's a fantastic player for you. But that's if you use him properly. Let's see if we can grab one more goal before the end of the game. Oh, Everton on the attack. Everton on the attack. Okay, we want it back. Good. Oh, the up they go again. Alright, that's good. Alright, so we're well into stoppage time. This is basically the end of the game. Sancho will ride. And the beak to Martial. And Martial is offside. So that should be the end of the game. Shh. Wef blue whistle. Alright, that's it. End of the game. Uh, as you can see, I don't know. These ones, these games are the ones that excite me the most. Because you show that we have the talent and the quality there to actually win the game 1 0 without having to go ultra defensive in the final part. Absolutely love that. Anthony Marcia, man of the match, with a solid rating of 8. Jaden Sansa did absolutely nothing. I have to fix him up after that. Uh, Tyrell Malicia, I was the worst of our defenders, but otherwise. We performed amicably, so we can't complain too much. Alright, so that's it for this one, guys. Let's see if I can grab a look at the match report, just to see uh, where we we faltered a bit. Uh, in terms of our tactical setup and our interplay. And see where we can actually make a few improvements. Um, <gasps> Tired. Well, make a few improvements um, where personnel is concerned um, and where tactics are concerned. So, let's see, view the report. Um, so, retain defensive shape where well, defense, uh, defense time tackles well, conceded few clear cut chances, kept the ball well while in opposition half. That is not bad. That is not bad. Can we really complain about that? But that is it for me, guys. This is, um, I know we missed out on some. Uh, videos, but that's because of the World Cup. You know how it is, right? World Cup time, that's how it is. So I'll see you guys soon.